Hi everyone, I just wanted to give a quick thank you to those that could make it to our open forum for student government. I just wanted to give people that weren't able to make it a chance to be able to see all of the hard work that we've done all year. So without further ado, here is a recording of our open forum. All right, um, welcome to the Student Government Open Forum. I appreciate everyone being here today. Uh, notably, we have Lynn Barter and Paul Petrie in the room. I appreciate you guys for coming here to Zoom. Um, and we're just gonna go over some of the work that we've done all year. And at the end, it'll be open to questions, maybe ideas you have for next year, things that you wish we would have done. Maybe we, if we would have had more time, we could have done some different things. We'll, we'll open it up then. So what does student government do? This is a question we get a lot. I actually had a conversation with Will Walsh, for those of you who know him. Uh, at the beginning of the year, he came up to me, I was sitting at a table, and he goes, so what do you guys like do? That is an excellent question. So I will answer that today. The mission of ASWSUE is to make the Wazoo Everett student experience as exceptional as possible by collaborating with university administrators, providing resources to students, hosting both social and professional events, and advocating on behalf of students. The Associated Students of Washington State University Everett, the acronym, which I mess up a lot, is the representative body of undergraduate, graduate, and professional students at Washington State University Everett. We are here to serve you. And the things that we love about this campus, and this is a really cute picture from the beginning of the year, we have uh, Anne McLeod, Holly, and Dr. Gladstone uh, chatting with students as they're starting their school year here. Uh, we really love our connection to other Wazoo campuses and just being able to say go Cougs and people yell it back. It's just a really kind of fun family sort of feeling. Uh, we have a culture of connection here because we're so tight knit. We only have 177 students currently in our school. And that number is going to go up in fall. Uh, good admissions for that. Uh, we have kind of this camaraderie that we have where we all know each other. It's different than a bigger campus where you might be kind of disconnected. We all know each other, we know what we're doing, we know what other students in different classes are doing for their projects. Um, yeah, and so we really try to cater to that small population with smaller events. Like the way I think of it is like, if we took all the money that we had in our budget and spent it on a prom, if we had like a million dollar prom, we'd get the same amount of people that would show up for movie night with popcorn. And so we think of that and keep that in mind. So for our work this year, we really focused on small scale events, like I said, our outreach to other campuses, talking to students there, uh, collaborative efforts with other clubs and student groups, and then we improved the space utilization in the school year. Uh, for August through September, Holly, do you want to speak to that? Because I haven't been hired yet, so I kind of missed it. Um, yeah, so basically over the summer, all the WSU executives Wait, sorry, all of the student government executives from each campus came to this campus and we basically just did a lot of team bonding and getting to know each other and finding out what we wanted to talk about for Cougie at the Capitol. It was a great opportunity to kind of experience what the WC culture was like as a new student and um, find those really awesome connections with the other campuses as well. Anything else that anyone wants to add about August or September? Um, so we had just switched over to the way our whole student government model was set up. Um, so it was a, a time for, for Holly and I to try and figure out what student government was really doing this year. So there was some restructuring that they did as well, because it used to be set up like there was committees and then there was like the general student government members and then you could pick what committee you wanted to be on. So there was like an events committee rather than the director of events, like one person to do a certain like set of tasks. So that was the restructuring that they did. Uh, and then of course they hired all of us that you see today. Uh, and then for October, uh, we tried to hit the ground running. Uh, Holly's idea was she really wanted to do root beer floats in October. It's cold. She's like, let's bring out the ice cream. And so we did. And we set up a root beer float table. And it was a way to connect with students and be like, hey, we're the incoming student government. Would you please take our survey? We want to put an event at the end of October. We want to gauge the interest in it. Um, and that event was pumpkin smashing because we had heard that last year they were trying to think of things that they could do that like wasn't in the building, was COVID friendly. Uh, so we set up a tarp we see there and we had a couple of bats 
And uh, Holly, Chris, Anna, and I, we went out to a pumpkin patch and bought, oh my gosh, what was it, like $300 worth of pumpkins? We had three huge barrels of it like, was, we kept dropping them. Pumpkins. The balancing of the barrel of pumpkins is really hard. Uh, so we worked on our endurance, balance, and strength that day. Uh, and then also we began offering Orca cards to the whole student body rather than just a select few. Um, initially, they had it set up where you could approach student government and be like, hey, I want an Orca card. And then they would kind of work on like a one-on-one -on -one basis if you wanted an Orca card. But now it's just, we have a bunch of them. We can give them out to whoever, whoever needs them. Um, and then this was our survey information from uh, gauging student interest, like I said earlier, for pumpkin smashing. And we also did trick-or-treating where we had staff set up candy bowls outside of their offices, kind of get students to like go see where staff is located. There's, they're a little hidden behind those doors there, so we're trying to push them in. Uh, yeah, so there's that. So for November, uh, we partnered with ACM, shout out to ACM, Alex Eshaw, a main man, uh, for clubs giving. It was mostly him, we helped with uh, food and setup and decorations. Um, it was a great way to uh, partner together and uh, help advertise that. Then you see Carl, Carl, raise your hand, Carl. Hello. There's Carl. Carl does social media. So yes. every post you see that is student government labeled, that is this man right here. Um, and then also in November, towards the end, we started uh, planning for better space utilization um, because the way that rooms are set up or like the, I don't know, but do, come here, you, this man. Can I, can I, can I okay, fine. We can sit. So um, Chris is going to talk to you a little bit more about the space utilization efforts that we did. Oh, actually, hold that thought. I'm going to talk about Muffin Monday real quick. You can prep, prep your thoughts. All right. So uh, in November, we also started Muffin Monday, which is a reoccurring thing that uh, most students know us by. If you ask anyone in the school, what does student government even do? They're going to go, I don't know, they bring us muffins. <laughs> so. <laughs> So this is our effort to be consistently student facing. Uh, we're a friendly face every Monday. And the initial purpose of this was we had student hours set up, but none of us really followed them because it's like, what do we do during those hours? It's like, well, if we have a set thing that we do this reoccurring that people can count on us that we're going to be there at a specific time um, and have free food, as all people you know, they love. Um, it's a way for us to be doing something specific and for students to be able to us. Um, it's also a conversation starter between majors. I wanted to take it one step further, and that's why I have that board every week with kind of a goofy question. A lot of them are really dumb, and I'm aware of that. Uh, and we have like, you know, Team Edward, Team Jacob, people vote. But it's something because we have, you know, we have all these engineering students, then we have business, hospitality, and comm, and they might not all have things in common, but what they can argue about is if a sandwich is a hot dog. <laughs> you know, like if a hot dog is a sandwich, you know what I mean. So <laughs> something that brings everyone together. That's something that makes you look at the board and go, <laughs> what? Uh, and then, yeah, creating uh, connections between student and staff is also important as well. And so here's a <laughs> compilation. We had our first, our first was Christmas or Thanksgiving. I started pretty simple. And then it morphed, as we all know, the first Muffin Monday we ever did, we morphed into adding a second board because we couldn't decide what colors the sticky notes were. It was a whole thing. Uh, several fights broke out. Uh, we also have Smooth or Crunchy Peanut Butter, Godzilla, or King Kong, which I think is probably my favorite because people started adding different, uh, we have Obama on there that someone added. Uh, and then uh, is a hot dog a sandwich? And then do you put pickles on your burger? And there's been several more. I think we've only missed like two or three Mondays throughout the whole school year because um, either it's been a holiday or breaks, but we try and keep it really consistent. And I've had people, I'll walk into the building. I haven't even set up the muffins yet. I don't even have the tables so out. I'll have people come around the corner and be like, what's the question? I'm like, I don't know, I just got here. What do you think? Uh, and I've had people come up to me and say, I have an idea for a question to put up on the board because they really like it. And also with this, I like to keep it up like throughout the week. That way, because um, I'm thinking about like our Western students and our, and our medical college students or other college uh, students that are here besides Wazoo in the morning. That way they can add to it if they like as well. Uh, and then December, okay, now Chris can talk. Sorry. Right. Go ahead. Uh, coming off my start right now. Okay, I will. So um, I started coming here uh, two years ago. And when I, when I came here, it was like, 
the first, the first, uh, everybody here experienced it, right? Like the, the space was set up for like COVID procedures and it was never really changed back. So everything was really spaced out. And like the space utilization was like really weird. There would be like tables in the middle of like 200 that like the ones that had all the, all the uh, computers on them. And it was just like a really weird utilization of the space. It made basically everywhere feel really kind of uncomfortable. Um, there was no place for students to like sit down or, or talk in groups anywhere. Um, so I wanted to change that because I thought that sucked. Um, also, we were kind of camping in 250. Yeah, we were using like we, classrooms. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then those started being utilized a little bit more. Yeah. So we kept getting pushed around a bit. And like in the middle of like large group projects, you don't want to have to like uproot and go somewhere else um, every two or three hours. So we needed like, more space uh, more dedicated space for like group learning and then also like a lot of people here are are stuck here for a huge part of the day and like the building being sort of like this in this like partial like quarantine setup felt kind of bad um so just wanted to change that uh, yeah yeah, so specific things we did for that. We now have a TV, Nintendo Switch. We moved the couches to be set up as I call it the couch pit. Uh, and uh, we have docking stations now. We have the three computers as opposed to, I think it was six. Because um, usually when you walked in, it was set up like a computer lab and only one or two people were using the computers anyway. Um, and then we also moved the food pantry. It was downstairs. We moved it to the upstairs. In, uh, in room 200 as well. Uh, and then the Cougar Closet, that was more Anna McLeod's thing. She really championed that. And that is, uh, if you need a suit or anything formal, you're going to an interview and you wanna look professional, but you don't wanna buy the clothes or can't, you can come and get them for free and you can keep them. So there's also that. Uh, we rearranged the furniture downstairs and in the hallways. And then uh, we redesigned the student government office. And this was all work that we did either over winter break or I think in like the first week when we came back for this semester. Uh, and then we also, you can see it there, we have this orange, we have this orange wall. <laughs> it is now red, it's too good. Uh, and we also moved the foosball and uh, air hockey upstairs as well. So we really put all of the, we made it kind of like the heart of the school, like where you want to go, where you want to hang out. We have Alice's tutoring table set up there. There's always people in there now. They're always having a good time. Unless they have like a test the next day. Uh, and then for January, uh, we really were focused on who did capital. It was a big undertaking. It was a lot of fun. It's kind of weird, but we did it. Uh, does anyone want to talk about Coop Day? Yeah, um, Coop Day was, the, it's the big legislative event that uh, SGC kind of puts together, the Student Government Council, the uh, executive uh, leadership of the different student governments uh, at every campus. Um, the purpose of it is to advocate to state legislators about um, our student needs. It's an annual event. Um, and all those who are signed up are able to go to Olympia and talk to legislators directly. Um, and we provide an agenda of items, things that we kind of all show up and speak about together. It's a really good opportunity to share your stories uh, and advocate on behalf of students. Um, it's kind of the, the gist of it. It was um, a lot of work that was done by the SGC and the DOLAs from every campus to get the event hosted. Um, and then day of, those of us who were either DOLAs or had previous experience um, were kind of team leaders, uh, were given a set of students to uh, kind of guide through the meetings with uh, legislators if they hadn't done that before. It was a really good, really good time. It was a really, it was a really cool experience to be in the Capitol building and then be walking past all the, the politicians and representatives and people that work in the Capitol. And you hear kind of in the distance or as people walk by you, they're like, oh, go kooks, because they like recognize our either sweatshirts we're wearing or they just know that there's Wazoo students that day. 
Um, it was a really fun experience. I think that was kind of the, the first instance of me really recognizing the, like what the term go kooks was like i hadn't really heard anyone say that uh, in person um because you know we're a smaller school we don't we don't have the same kind of um connection to sports teams where one would say that so that was fun also i met a senator that was wearing cowboy boots and he had his dog in his office and he was really cool uh <laughs> and he was hilarious what an experience that was uh yeah okay love that Okay, and then for February, uh, February was a little bit more low key. We were all really focusing on our classes, but we did want to do something for Valentine's Day. So we set up these hearts that you might have seen up on the staircase, and then people could write their own, as opposed to like having Valentine's Day boxes or anything. I was like, I will just stick them up on the stairs, and people can read them as they go by. And so that's a, a fun interactive thing where it's not like a set time, but people can interact and, and partake as they want to. Um, and then we also had cupcakes, uh, Valentine's Day themed, uh, to kind of tapped on them up on Monday, extended that. And then, oh, bummer. So for the movie watch party, I had put in photos of another survey that we did where we tracked um, what time students were available to be able to come to this event uh, and what movie they wanted to see. So I ran around the school and I was like, what movie do you want to watch? What movies are people interested in? And I kind of wanted it to be like a, like STEM inspired. And so there was like Iron Man, Big Hero 6. What, what were the other movies on there? I'm trying to remember now. The Secret Life of Walter Mitty, which is STEM, but it is a good movie. You know, yeah. Um, but yeah, we did a survey and uh, and then we got together and we all watched Spider-Verse in a classroom. We made popcorn. It was fun. Low-key thing. Um, Refresh this real quick, bear with me. Okay, there we go. There we go. Okay, so you can see the survey results here. And then that was another post that Carl did. Shout out to Carl, thank you. And then for March, we did a major mixer where we had a Red Robin burger bar set up in uh, 200 and had everyone coming out and we had just gotten the tv set up so it was kind of breaking in the new tv as well everyone played smash it was really fun uh we also did wazoo turned 130 numbers man. 133 133 you correct me <laughs> uh we also did base training which i unfortunately missed out on because i was representing admissions at a CSAC event um it, who who attended base training here okay who wants to talk about that yeah it was a um it's a collaborative event with uh, students from Vancouver, their leadership, their, their student government leadership. Um, they wanted to do a DEI training with us. Um, and so that's what we did. Um, the kind of gist of it was regarding uh, how effective we as a team and as individuals are at uh, modifying our behavior in a given cultural context, being able to understand the cultural context you're in and uh, adapt to it. Um, it kind of broke down several different, uh, I guess, mindsets that uh, people have or approaches towards uh, cultural adaptation, um, kind of uh, along a continuum of uh, adaptability versus kind of uh, not, not being so adaptable. And it was interesting to see where, um, as a collective student government fell on that spectrum and also where we thought we were at. Um, it kind of helped point out some things that we uh, can work on. That was really good. Um, and it was done via Zoom, I think yep. Tri-Cities It was uh, it? Vancouver. Vancouver, Vancouver yeah. hosted it. So this was collective between all the student governments. They got together on Zoom and they were interacting that way. Anyone else want to speak to things we did in March? Okay. And then for April, we just got back from Pullman. 
oh gosh, last week? Literally last week. Literally last week. We went to Pullman. We were there for about three days. Uh, we we flew, thank God. Uh, and then we had a couple of people that weren't uh, student government, and they drove to Pullman, bless their hearts. Um, and so this was student government funded. They paid for our airplane tickets, our hotels, uh, the car rental that we had. Thank you to Holly for driving the Coop van. It was a little so minivan nice. with a like Coop logo on the side. It was really nice. I mean, every time we got in, it would go Coop van. <laughs> uh, and it was it was for communication students. Um, it was people from TV broadcasting, Pulitzer, uh, Pulitzer Prize winning journalists. Um, and then several other speakers, and it was a really cool opportunity. And I hadn't been to the campus before, so it was it was really fun that that was the first time I had gone, and I had all my all my people with me. I've never eaten so much cheese. Oh my gosh, we had so much dairy! <laughs> oh my gosh, we got there, we tried Ferdinand's, the Cougar Gold cheese, I had the Cougar Gold poutine, which is oh, phenomenal. Um, and now we're just focusing on wrapping up all of our hard work and hiring for the next year. So the the people that come after us can continue our legacy. I don't know, but uh, yeah. And so now I just want to go through, kind of reintroduce people. Um, I think you know, we all know each other at this point, but uh, this is another way that we can pitch um, hiring for next year as well. So this is Teddy. Teddy's right here. Teddy is uh, software engineering. He's graduating in December 2023 because he wanted to extend the school year a bit and go to Sweden. Oh my gosh. And then we have Holly right here. Uh, she's our vice president. She is integrated strategic communications. She's graduating in 2024. Let's say hi, Holly. Oh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have Chris. He's director of legislative affairs, uh, rocking the Hawaiian shirts. Uh, he's also software engineering. He's graduating May 2020. We have public relations, Carl Highland. He is in data analytics. He's graduating in 2024, along with Holly. Uh, it's me, I'm Laura Campbell. Hi. Uh, integrated strategic communications. I will also be graduating this May. And then DEI, we have Zanab, and she is business administration, graduating December 2023. And then Selena, who couldn't make it today, uh, she is business administration. She's graduating December 2023. So now we're opening up the floor. Uh, what can we do to serve the student population better? We want to hear from you. So any uh, event ideas for next year? What kind of services do students need? Maybe something you've heard one of your friends struggling with. Oh, I wish they had this on campus. And what kind of growth would you like to see that student government might be able to assist with? So within the realm of our control, we are, I mean, we're students. We can't like build a build a gym in the parking lot kind of thing but we can try and we can see who we can talk to for certain questions and things that you might want right about the end of that yeah, hi i have two questions sure uh one with the orca cards are there plans to continue that program for future, for future students yeah i think they're expanding it as well because right now it's just from here down south, and they're trying to expand it to be a cover up north as well. So, like Carl, who takes the bus from Mount Vernon every day. Oh my gosh, <laughs> what a commute! Uh, Carl would be able to use his work with his yeah. work with cards. With that. Do we know what what transit authorities? Just for recruitment purposes too, and I'm talking to prospective students. Do we know what transit authorities are covered with our current orca cards? It is quite a few. Um, I can find that information if you would like it. Yes, please. Okay. I know the light rail is covered. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. So that should be everything but Skagit. Skagit uses U so. Yeah, it's King County Metro and a whole bunch of other things. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Okay. And the other yeah. one, just since I had two, um, are there any plans? Like, I saw the photos with them up on Monday. That's awesome. Are there any plans to track the engagement on those types of events? Or do we track the engagement in any way? That's a really good idea. So for CTAC, what we had set up was an iPad where students could sign up, put their emails down and say, hey, if you want more information, please let us know. And a lot of students are really willing to like get, um, get plugged in and get more information. So we might start doing that where we have either a laptop or an iPad out and people can get connected that way. Why not have before people um, take a muffin, they vote on the board but write their name on the stick. Yeah, 
Any other event ideas, holidays we missed that you would like to see? Now's your time. So I'm going to advocate, please get a pool table. A pool table. <laughs> Holman has multiple. <laughs> I don't see why not. Yes, check. Can we actually get like solid works installed and updated on the computer lab computers? IT. So because we got on like one of them right now. Uh, that was a fault of Boyland this summer when we were imaging the labs. They let the license labs. Uh, Lorea has gone and put it on all the computer labs, and then we ran into a networking issue with licensing. That has all since been fixed. Absolutely. So that should be everywhere now. Are they all the same version now, too? Because there yeah. was two or three different years. Before. There's a mix of old version and 2023. And if you find an old one, let us know, and Lorea can put 23 on them. We're doing a full refresh next semester over the summer. Cool. So next year they will all be at the latest version. Um, one thing that I would like to see next year is pointed out to us in that uh, BAC training. Um, Part of the, the reason we hired um, someone for a DEI role was to ensure that as student government was doing whatever it was doing, had some people actively thinking about DEI uh, as opposed to uh, hoping that the student government members uh, consider it. It's somebody's job to actively be considering it. And DEI stands for diversity, equity, and inclusion. Yeah. Um, which, yeah. Has been a good step, but something that was pointed out to us in the training um, was that we uh, we were kind of doing whatever student government does, and then considering DEI as opposed to doing DEI things. Um, so uh, a little little more proactive, I guess, about uh, our DEI efforts next year. Um, hopefully, we can. Especially with more um, student event coordinators uh, kind of open for the DEI person is as well. They were on the team to put some effort into doing DEI uh, events. Okay. Uh, we have six more minutes before we have to get into the room. Um, I a question to student government members currently <coughs> in the room. What would you like to see the next person in your position do? What are some hopes that you would have if you could, if you could mentor them or say, hey, I didn't get the chance to do this. Maybe you can take this on and try it. I know for, for my role specifically, um, sort of uh, engaging with SGC a little bit more proactively. It was particularly difficult for me. Um, I hope that the next the next bill is a little bit more proactive in representing uh, Everett students. Yeah, you know, joined a little bit late. There's kind of some drama with the bill specifically. Yeah, but <laughs> kind of didn't want to start anything. You know. So okay. <laughs> Having out some better organization for bills. All right. Anything else? Anything social media PR that you would hope? Yeah. So as PR, it's kind of important to be in tune with the students on campus, and there's only so much you can do while posting stuff on social media. It took me a while to realize that there's actually like five different clubs on Discord with all the students, and it's very active. And I think it's a great way to get to know the students on campus. So the next person in my position. I would like to let them know, hey, there's discords for all these clubs. It's a great way to get to know the students. And uh, that would probably jumpstart them. Okay. Utilizing discord would be a great way. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Over the next person in your shoes. Well, I just hope they are more diverse and that it comes to this group because I feel like it's only like a lot of people of us. So. It's hard trying to like represent myself here, but yeah. <laughs> um, for my role, 
So for I3C, um, I've talked to Carl about this, but the vice presidents didn't really meet monthly. And not there wasn't any drama. It was really just we had our busy schedules and never initiated like a time to meet each month. So like it's really great when we all come together for the SGC events, but we didn't meet separately monthly. So maybe just being the initiative and being like, hey guys, we should probably meet. <laughs> Um, I know the finals coming up and close weeks coming up. Are there any plans to do anything for the students as we roll into close week? Yeah, absolutely. So we were actually talking about that in our general assembly earlier. Oh, we're talking sorry. about um, no, that's okay. Um, we, I mean, the start for the slides is ten thirty. Uh, we um, we're talking about getting the coffee cart, uh, possibly all finals week. Um, having a bigger budget from up in Monday, so we have more Costco muffins to spread out through the week, ordering pizza. Um, is there anything in specific that you'd like to suggest for that? Uh, we also have a, we're trying to plan like a, like an end of year party as well. Marshall. Uh, are you guys gonna break out your student government barbecue for that also? Uh, we do have a grill and I know Chris can grill master. Uh, so possibly, maybe. If the if the weather would cooperate, oh my gosh, I want to do. I had something in the back of my mind. I wanted to do what I call the recess event, like where just one day when the sun's actually out, we all get outside and we have badminton and cornhole and uh, a bunch of other activities we can do outside. We have a football somewhere. Uh, I think that would be a cool thing to do. But um, it's awful out, so we haven't done that yet. Uh, and also we've been gone and born. Um, those kind of events are fantastic at the very beginning of the year. Mm -hmm. um, there's a little better. The struggle with it is having people hired quickly enough to have the, the bodies available to that sort of thing. So making sure that we're uh, ready to hire quickly. Yeah. Um, an idea I have for the next person after me is trying to pull people from this building once it opens. This is going to be a population of every community college students that are going to be coming to this building because they need to go here for library reasons or they're coming to hang out. And so what I had hoped for, because I thought it was going to open a little bit earlier, but we got pushed back, was setting up like a lemonade stand or doing some kind of recess activity like I mentioned um, and getting people to see, oh, that looks fun. Why don't we go over and hang out with those guys? Um, just pulling them in that way. So that's going to be a new population to, to cater to. Any other questions before we close out? Okay, here are crickets. All right, uh, we're done. We're <laughs> Thank you guys. Thank you for coming. We appreciate your time. coffee it's so good. Anyone wants candy? I have a bowl. And then, too, we can stop the recording.